hello, famous friends. Welcome back to Famous. We're still talking about His Royal Highness, King Solomon, and what he's been up to to carry on his father's legacy, especially when it comes to honoring God. Now remember, we're not doing worship in our videos, so I'm gonna give you some more music for this week. Our first song you can sing is Love Each Other by Kid Spring. Another one is You Are My God from Kid Spring. And Hillsong Kids give us My Best Friend. Now Lifeway Kids gives us Follow. And Orange Music gives us God Loves Me Specially. That's a fun one. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you some questions before we jump into our book of First Kings and our Bible story today. Now, often when you hear like famous people on stage, um, there's an old saying that they used to say a lot, like thank you and good night after someone would be finished performing, either music or a comedian or doing something silly on stage. Thank you and good night. You know, ask your grownups, they probably know more about it. But I wanna know if something good has happened to you this last week. And if it has, you're gonna say, thank you and good night when I say it, okay? So in this past week, has anyone said something nice about you? Has anyone helped you look for something that was lost? Has anyone helped you make something? If you've sat down for any of these, we're gonna keep playing because somebody else might not have had a turn to sit down yet. Has anybody helped you clean up? Has anybody helped you feel better when you were sad? Has anybody made you something to eat? I probably could have sat down every one of these. We just finished our first week for my new group of kids at my school. And my goodness, have we had a fabulous time getting to know each other. And we've created some really great friendships already. They helped me to clean up. They made me feel better when I was sad and feeling a little tired from our first week together. They said really nice things about me. One girl told me my hair was so pretty and she asked her mom to do the same hairstyle. That made me feel so happy that we could have something in common. Now, making something to eat wasn't exactly what happened, but I do have some play food in my classroom and they were pretending to make me some food. Um, let's see, did they find something that was lost? Yes, somebody lost the pretend money in the pretend cash register in the pretend kitchen and the whole classroom went around looking for it. Don't worry, we eventually found it in the backpack, which was not pretend, it was a real backpack in the play center. But there are some wonderful reasons to be thankful. Thank you and good night, remember? So we're gonna find out more about King Solomon and the things that he did when he was feeling thankful for all the ways that God had blessed him. So like I said earlier, grab your Bibles. We're going to the book of First Kings. It's in the Old Testament, so it's towards the front of your Bibles. Solomon has been blessed with wisdom from God, right? So he could make the right choices. And Solomon was then blessed with much more because his heart was to do the best he could for God's people, the Israelites. So because he asked for wisdom, because he had already made one small great choice, God said, I'm gonna bless you with more things because you were not selfish, you were not thoughtless, you were not mean or hurtful, you thought about others before you thought about yourself, you thought about God's people before you thought about what gains you could have, you were blessing others when you still had nothing. So God said, I'm gonna give you everything. <laughs> now, Solomon is so thankful for these things that he turns right back to God and he says, I'm going to build you a temple. Pretty cool, right? A temple would have been a place of worship, uh, similar to what we have as a church, but it would have served many different functions for the people of Israel, but it would have been honoring to God and even a place to store the Ark of the Covenant, which was extremely important to Israelite people. We're going to read from 1 Kings chapter 6, verses 11 through 14. Now, there are many chapters that talk about the very specifics of the temple because Solomon made a, Solomon made a lot of wise choices when it came to building this temple, and he was obedient to God. But I'm just going to read you a couple of verses from each of these little chapters, and it says, we're going to start with verse 6. Oh, I'm, we're going to start with verse 11. Then the Lord gave this message to Solomon. Concerning this temple you are building, if you keep all my decrees and regulations and obey all of my commands, 
I will fulfill through you the promise I made to your father, David. I will live among the Israelites and will never abandon my people, Israel. So Solomon gets to work and he follows these instructions about all the different inside pieces and the outside pieces and all of the materials that it would be built with and the size that it was going to be and all of these tiny little things because it was important to Solomon to be honoring and worshipful back to God because God had blessed him with so very much. Now, I'm going to skip forward to chapter 8 verses 22 through 30 and this actually comes for a time where the temple is finished. But Solomon is not. Solomon stands in front of the Israelites and he prays a prayer of dedication, turning this building that he has made back over to God's hands. And this is where all of the Israelites hear Solomon's heart and how he fully dedicated his actions to God. We're going to start chapter 8 in verses 22 and it says then solomon stood before the altar of the lord in front of the entire community of israel and he lifted his hands towards heaven and he prayed O lord god of israel there is no god like you in all of heaven above or the earth below you keep your covenant that's a promise and you show your unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion you have kept your promise to your servant David, remember Solomon's dad, my father, and you made that promise with your own mouth and with your own hands. You have fulfilled it today. And now, O oh Lord, God of Israel, carry out the additional promise you made to your servant David, my father. For you said to him, if your descendants guard their behavior and faithfully follow me as you have done, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Now. O oh God of Israel, fulfill this promise to your servant David, my father. But will God really live on earth? Why, even the highest heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Nevertheless, listen to my prayer and my plea, O oh Lord, my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is making you today. May you watch over this temple night and day. This place where you have said my name will be there. May you always hear the prayers I make towards this place. May you hear the humble and the earnest requests from me and your people, Israel, when we pray towards, pray toward this place. Yes, hear us from heaven where you live and when you hear. For now, Solomon goes on to pray a lot more, but I think that's a really great small portion that shows us how much he loves God and how much he wants the Israel people to hear that God will keep his promises. He will fulfill his covenants and he will keep his Israel people, the Israelites, his chosen people whom he loves safe and protected when they are honoring and obedient and worshipful to him. Now, just a little bit later in the next chapter, chapter nine, we're actually going to hear God's response to Solomon dedicating the temple to him. And in verse three, it says, the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your petition. I have set this temple apart to be holy. This place you have built where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it for it is dear to my heart. Now God goes on to say that if they are honoring and live a life of integrity and godliness and that they obey his commands, his decrees, his regulations, he will stay close to his people Israel and a descendant of David will always be on the throne. But... If your descendants abandon me, God says, or disobey the commands I've given them, then I will uproot Israel from this land that I've given them. I will reject this temple that I've made holy to honor my name, and I will make Israel an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by will be appalled and will gasp in horror. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be because his people abandoned the Lord their God who brought their ancestors out of Egypt and they worshiped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why the Lord's brought disaster upon them. Now I wanted to highlight a little bit at the end there that wasn't so peachy keen and wonderful because God is making yet another promise to the Israelite people. He is telling them, you are my chosen people. I love you. I will protect you. You will come here and honor my name and I will bless you for it. 
But if you don't, you're done. You're gone. I have a set of rules. I have a set of standards. You will not mock me. You will not dishonor me because then it's gone. Now Solomon took what was his blessing and he was given this gift of wisdom, yes, but he turned it into something physical to show all of Israel how God had blessed him and how thankful he was for it. Not only was he going to take that knowledge and be a great ruler, but he was gonna honor God immediately with that same gift. Solomon's temple isn't around today. Isn't that kind of sad? But it was made up of so many different materials and precious gems. And Solomon was so dedicated to the tiniest of details because he wanted it to be the best he could for God. And when it was finished, just like we read, Solomon prayed in front of the Israelite people. And anyone who heard that prayer, I mean, you and I today, how many years later? So many years, I can barely count them. We still hear how thankful Solomon was to God. And how he dedicated not only the temple, but his actions and the Israelite people to be honoring to God. Today we're going to hear how when we are thankful, we can give God what we have. Now, you would maybe be looking around and say, Ms. Julia, what do I have? Yeah, sometimes it feels that way, doesn't it? What do I have that, that could be good enough for God? What do I have that would make a difference to God? What do I have that God would even notice? It's you, you are what you have. You have your strengths, you have your gifts, you have the desires of your heart, you have your passions and your kindness and your love and your life. And you can give that to God. Isn't that pretty exciting? Solomon did the exact same thing. He had himself and God said, I'll give you what you want, what do you want? And Solomon made a wise choice by asking for wisdom. And not only that, but God blessed him even more for honoring and obeying and following his commands. And when we're thankful, we can give God what we have. God gives us so very much. Even if it doesn't feel like grandiose big things, you probably have somewhere to live. You probably are able to go to school and learn great things. You probably have a friend or two or three or four or five. You have a church family who would love to welcome you and get to know you better. You probably have a family. You probably have some way to watch this video, which means you're probably pretty lucky as well. When we start thinking about our everyday lives and the many things that we can be thankful for, the list starts to get pretty long. Solomon was so thankful that he was given the honor of building a house of worship for God. He was so thankful for hard work to do. He was so thankful to be given the wisdom to be king. That's a lot of responsibility and yet he was so thankful. And we can be just as thankful that we already have a place of worship and especially we have a God who deserves our worship for all of the ways that he blesses us. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Was... Nope, those were not real words. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we close? Heavenly Father, I ask that you help us remember in the times that we are complaining or dragging our feet to get out the door to church, Lord. I ask that you help us remember how thankful we can be for all of the blessings that you give us, the good things, the things that are tough and make us stronger, Lord. I ask that you help us be excited and, and just happy in your presence, Lord, that we can come together with our fellow believers and worship and praise you and grow closer to you. God, we are so thankful. We are so thankful for all of the things that you give us and for the things that we have, Lord. So help us, so help us show our thanks with our time and our attention and our hearts, Lord. Help us love others the way that you love us. Help us give to others the way that you give to us. Help us give our gifts and use our talents for the glory of you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for these kids and their families. I pray for those that are headed back to the classrooms or back in a school setting or Lord, just getting back into the swing of things, back into their routines, Lord. I ask that they remember 
all of the blessings that you've given them, even in the hard times, because that is when, ah, that is when we need your love the most, I feel. That is when we feel the most alone and just your love, your love and your kindness and your presence and your sa our Savior, your Son, just comes and fills us up. We can be so very thankful, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that we draw closer to you and I pray for the church family that we are as compassionate and committed like Solomon was, that when we enter this place of worship, we encounter your presence because it has been dedicated to you. It has been prayed over and you are welcome in this space because we live our lives for you. In your holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. I wanted to share just a little bit of something personal for me. Um, this year, I decided in my classroom that we were going to memorize scripture. I just felt like it was something that my kids were absolutely my school kids, my students, were absolutely able to do. And I just got to tell you, it was one of the greatest things that I've ever taught before, ever, to see these little kids try their hardest to say a really big word. And I taught them the word compassionate this week. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Now we know that Paul wrote a lot of letters in the New Testament, and he was telling Christians, and he was telling the church to be kind and compassionate to one another. And I think more than anything, the way that we live our lives and the way that we encounter those around us, God's asking us to be kind and compassionate to one another. So this week, when you are thankful that the God of the universe loves you so very much that he sent his son to die on the cross for you, that we can take that love and we can be kind and compassionate to one another. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.